For more on what to expect from this summit, we've reached two people who know what these high-level talks are like. In Lexington, Kentucky, Kelly Kraft served as the U.S. Ambassador to Canada and Ambassador to the United Nations during the Trump administration. David McNaughton was Canada's Ambassador to the U.S. during the same period. He is in Toronto. Thank you both so much for speaking with us. Mr. McNaughton, I'm going to start with you. This is the first North American Leader Summit in five years. What is the significance of today? Well, I think it's really significant, uh, you know, and it's it's always helpful to get together, um, you know, to talk about shared uh, interests and, and common goals, but also to deal with some of the, uh, the irritants. I mean, I think the United States and Canada have some with Mexico. I think Mexico obviously has some with the U.S. and we clearly do, too. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, there's no there's no substitute for actually getting together in person to uh, be very frank about these things. The one thing I would comment on, just in terms of the issues that we're facing right now, I, I do think that they will get resolved. I don't think it's gonna be easy, but one of the things that I think uh, makes it more difficult is when uh, there are public threats or, or, or these issues are being discussed in, in public. I think you do, I think Paul's right, you have to be direct with Americans. But the best place to be direct is behind closed doors and not to have this uh, fought out in the media because then people have to take positions that makes it more difficult for them to to extract themselves from. Ms. Kraft, Canada is here today trying to convince the White House and powerful U.S. lawmakers to change a proposal that Canada says could hurt auto sector jobs. It's, it's kind of a familiar battle Canada experienced with the Trump administration dealing with NAFTA negotiations. Tell us what Canada needs to do behind the scenes to try and get through to those lawmakers or to the White House. Well, you know, I, th I think Ambassador McNaughton is correct. I mean, we need to have these discussions behind closed doors. I mean, we saw the, the 232 steel tariffs behind closed doors, not out. We did not air this out. And the way I look at this is I would say to President Biden, why would we want to jeopardize a generational trade deal for a tax credit? I mean, Kentucky would also stand to lose from a tax credit of this sort with this these components being made by union companies. So I look at this as, let's think about this 10 years, 20 years down the road. Are we going to jeopardize this relationship and this USMCA, which Ambassador McNaughton and myself and Christia Freeland and Ambassador Lighthizer, Prime Minister Trudeau and President Trump, we worked hard. The Canadians are fierce but so are the Americans, but we worked it through behind closed doors. We didn't air it out in the public, and I would certainly hope that that's what we will be doing. And, you know, my other concern is we have, you know, to Ambassador McNaughton, you know how, how we worked on dairy, and we need to really enforce the Canadian dairy part of this to make sure that, you know, as we look at our dairy farmers and we look at our exports coming into Canada, that we don't, obviously, you know, we don't look at price manipulation again. But, you know, I feel it's a positive. I think USMCA should not be political. It should be something that we're looking at as our supply chain is growing. I mean, if we had not had USMCA, yes, pre-COVID, it was nice to have. But now that we are all coming out of this COVID pandemic, it was a must have. And so I feel like we should not politicize it. I mean, we have a lot to talk about today. I'm sure that they discussed energy. I mean, I'm very discouraged with President Biden and the fact that I feel he's trying to destroy our North America independence. I mean, I'm concerned about Alberta being the fact that this is going to harm their economy. How many jobs, a thousand jobs would have been on this continuation of this pipeline? So this all turns into tax revenue that Alberta and Ontario and British Columbia, they pay out to the rest of Canada. So how does this affect the rest of Canada that receives the benefit from Alberta. Now, Ms. Kraft, with respect, uh, President Donald Trump campaigned on NAFTA during the 2016 U.S. election, campaigned to, th uh, to rip it up, renegotiate it, and, and how, how is that not political? If you're arguing that these, this shouldn't be made political, that was political, no? Well, you know, that was part of his campaign because his campaign was all about the American workers and making- Is that not what Joe Biden's trying to do? Is that- but is that not what Joe Biden's trying to do, build American jobs and union jobs in the country, which he also campaigned on? 
But, you know, that's going to I was very encouraged that that Biden did campaign on the importance of keeping our national security, which is meaning keeping our supply chain, keeping our manufacturing jobs at home. But you don't want to punish those right to work states by allowing the only the union companies it for people to have the tax credits from a union manufacturing of EV batteries and such. Uh, Mr. McNaughton, you've been behind closed doors for so many of these kinds of high level meetings. What do you what do you think is going to be happening behind closed doors for this trilateral trilateral meeting that was supposed to start uh, about half an hour ago, but hasn't started yet? Well, you, you know, I, I I think that the um, you know they will they will spend a significant amount of time talking about common interests and shared interests. I mean, I don't think that it will be completely uh, you know consumed with the so-called irritants. Um, but you know, the, the, these these things. Uh, what I found, like yesterday, President Biden was in Detroit. And he was talking about the EV vehicle issue. And he said, we don't want to be sending jobs halfway around the world. So clearly what he has in mind in terms of where he, the lens he sees this through is clearly through China and, and, and other you know, Eastern countries. But what, what, he was, what he's really doing is, is not uh, stealing jobs from halfway around the, the world. He's stealing jobs from across the river. And, and I think part of the things that the thing that I realized when I was in Washington was just that the, the Americans don't think about the interrelationship of our economy and their economy and the importance of Canada to so many uh, states in the United States. And we have to constantly remind them. And some of that is look at the benefit that we can give to you. If you, you know, what going back to what Paul was saying, their focus is on 2022. We can either be helpful in terms of, you know, the economy in the United States in 2022, or actually we could be very harmful too. And we don't want to go there. It's more the, out of sadness than in anger. But as we saw with the PPE, when they tried to say, well, we're not going to send any PPE to Canada, we said, well, you know, the PPE is made in part with pulp from BC. And if you cut us off, you aren't getting any pulp. Um, and then all of a sudden people start to realize the, the interrelationship of our two economies. And so I, I, think, I think we can get there because we have to get there. And I don't think that, um, I think when, when all is said and done, there will be a compromise reached in the same way as, you know, Ambassador Kraft and I worked on, you know, finding a way to get the, the, the auto uh, sector, you know, taken care of within the context of, the USMCA. We also were able to get rid of the steel and aluminum tariffs. Uh, some of that was 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 convincing the importance through the shared uh, benefit to each country, and some of it, frankly, was uh, you know being a little bit tough uh, and direct. But uh, uh, I think we we both agree. And 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 I think the other thing. This is one of the things that that Ambassador Kraft and I were able to do together, and that was to be able to you know, say to our governments, this is a very important thing for them. And this is what, how, and this is how we should try and get around it. And I know in many occasions when, when I think the Americans were doubtful about how serious we were about certain things, Ambassador Kraft was able to, to, to go to the White House and say, yeah, they really are because, you know, David and I get along well and we understand each other and we understand when things are important and when they're not. So I, I think I think this is going to get solved, but it's going to take some time because it's, it's a big deal in both countries. Uh, and to that you know, point, if I may interrupt. Uh, yep, jump in. Go ahead, uh, Ms. Kraft. If you remember, if if you remember, Ambassador, you know we to have the labor value content and the regional value content was the first time that had ever been in an agreement. And how important is that that we have this now, especially with moving into electric vehicles, that we that we have this this labor value content where 40% auto, 45% trucks have to be made with workers making at least $16 per hour. That's a benefit to the U.S. and to Canada. And obviously Absolutely. was very important to our countries in helping Mexico to keep their workers at home in order to build up their community so that they 
remain in Mexico and have, you know, a healthy economy. So I feel like that is something that we were thinking longevity on. It was, as I said, you all were fierce negotiators. We were as well. And I felt that that's why we came out of this both very strong. And Katie, this relationship is far more than today and tomorrow. It has a past and it has a huge, huge history ahead of us. And I think we need to remember that. We cannot allow something today to, to overcome us when we're thinking about generations from now. We have to remember that Canada and the U.S. and Mexico, North America, are here for the rest of our lives. And it's very important and I'm, I'm you know, very excited for the incoming Ambassador Cohen to be able to understand the importance that this is like a marriage. You have got to work at it every day and never take it for granted. Ms. Kraft, one point that we heard from Mr. McNaughton there is that one thing that Canadian officials really mar remarked upon is that when they needed to get a hold of Donald Trump, that you had Donald Trump's ear. And after your tenure as Canadian ambassador, you were promoted to be the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations. I'm very curious, do you still support former President Donald Trump? You know, I am very supportive of President Donald Trump because look at the policies that he put forth in the United States. I mean, just look at USMCA and how that has helped our supply chain for North America, how that has built up our manufacturing, not only for workers, but for our national security in the United States and Canada and Mexico. You know, his, his foreign policy for me was very helpful at the United Nations. I mean, if you look at our economy and you look at our energy independence at the time, I mean, Biden comes into office, he cancels the Keystone Pipeline, he says yes to Nord Stream 2, we're, we're asking OPEC for oil. I mean, we're supposed to be an independent, North America, energy independent, and that is what we spent a year and a half on with USMCA is making certain that North America was independent for the rest of the world for our security reasons. But, but if, I'm, if I may jump in here, do you think that his claims of voter fraud are harmful to U.S. democracy, the unproven claims? You know, I served as U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, and I was focused on the, the challenges that were ahead of us with the other but, countries and making certain that we kept America safe and that but we you live, you held live the in the United States. Everyone witnessed what happened. Do you, do, you, do you not think that that's detrimental to democracy, not just in the United States, but around the world? You know, I served our Commander in Chief, Donald Trump, and I served him very proudly, and I'm very proud of his foreign service policies that keep America safe and our national interest first and foremost. Will you back him in 2024 if he runs again? I'm absolutely a huge fan of Donald Trump and will be very supportive of whatever decision he makes. All right, uh, former Ambassador Kraft, former Ambassador McNaughton, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Katie, good to talk to you. Great to see you, David. Yeah, good to see you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.